Hey, what's up guys? Today let's talk about five key ingredients that are essential to go from conflict to connection. You know, most of us, when we're faced with conflict in work relationships or even in personal relationships, we struggle sometimes to go from getting triggered around something with the heightened emotion when our needs, our interests, our values, or even just our perceptions differ. And going from that moment of trigger to calming our nervous system and then being able to take thoughtful, intentional action forward to not just resolve the conflict, make the pain go away, but actually improve the situation, design some kind of action that moves us forward, as well as maybe even deepen the quality and the strength of the relationship rather than damaging it. Is that even possible? Well, I'm here to say absolutely, but you know, these are some hard won lessons that I've learned along the way and leaders that I've worked with over the years face into daily. Just today I was working uh, with a team in Canada and we were talking about the importance of facing into different opinions. How in a rapidly changing world and landscape, we may need to re-examine some of our assumptions. And if we don't make space for divergent views, which inevitably means we, may ha we might have conflict over different ideas, we may not have the space necessary to generate the kind of productive dialogue that helps us truly win in the marketplace. The same is true when we uh, observe behaviors of colleagues, action or inaction from colleagues, that we feel is contributing to our success and our effectiveness and therefore enhances our trust in those working relationships, or on the contrary, actually is impeding our work effectiveness and might be diminishing the trust in that work relationship. And so, you know, part of the challenge is what are those ingredients for healthy conflict that is authentic, that's real, that actually leads to results and deepen relationships? So first, before we get into the five key ingredients, let's talk for a minute about, about two ingredients that are not so helpful. And this is maybe logical to some of us, but it's very easy to fall into either one of these extremes. And I bet as you listen to this, you'll be able to pinpoint a time, probably recently, where you might have been pulled into one of these two. So let's imagine a situation in your personal or your professional life where you got triggered. Let's use something like anger as an example, because it's a very evident kind of real, in your face, kind of sometimes we even feel the heat of anger rising up. You can see people getting flushed, right? It's, it's very a kind of visible, visceral kind of emotion. There's, there's lots of different emotions that we could play with. In fact, I think it was Aristotle who said, um, getting angry is easy, right? But being angry with the right person at the right time in the right way, that's not easy, right? So how do we be intentional about how we express our emotions in the moment? And that's the first two not so helpful ingredients when facing into conflict. Because when we get triggered, we have in our fight, flight, or freeze kind of autonomic nervous system response, one of two extremes that we can get pulled to. We can either overexpress, right? And this is where passion becomes volatility, where, you know, um, uh, we're very direct and kind of overly controlling or, or, or dominating, right, in our response. And we kind of drive or we withdraw completely, right? Out of anger, we're so frustrated that we kind of clench up and we just storm away, right? That would be an over expression of an emotion. Not so helpful because it's going to take um, us in a direction away from the relationship and not honor with candor the truth of what we are experiencing right now and certainly not in a productive manner that kind of invites discourse. The second ingredient that kind of doesn't help us is when we do the opposite and oftentimes that's a suppression. So overexpress or suppress. Neither one of those are helpful. Suppression may feel like in the moment, especially in a corporate environment or a new professional working environment that it's maybe your only option because that's the norm, right? You, and we're not inviting outrage pounding on the table, for example, but suppression has become so culturally indoctrinated in so many people and so many cultures that it becomes a bit, um, almost um, by default, an unhealthy cutting off of what we're truly feeling in the moment and pushing it down. 
But as a colleague and friend of mine um, who works a lot with uh, female leaders around emotional intelligence, but more in the therapeutic space, had uh, shared with me a great metaphor a number of years back. And that is like, imagine one of those rainbow colored beach balls that you see children tossing around at a beach that you, you know, sort of blow up and, and, and fill it with air. And imagine taking one of those balls and kind of submerging it. Let's say you go into a swimming pool and you're gonna submerge that ball underneath you and you're going to then sit on top of that ball and kind of you know pretend that everything's cool there's not a, a beach ball underneath me I'm good I'm good I'm kind of making my way from this end of the pool to the other number one it's gonna be really damn obvious what you're doing because you're trying to like I got it going on here but you know what no you got a beach ball underneath you did you, did you know you have a beach ball <laughs> underneath you and at some point you know what's gonna happen that beach ball is gonna shoot out from underneath you. It's gonna hit your colleague upside the head and they're gonna wonder, hey, what the heck? Where did that come from, right? And that's exactly what happens when we suppress energy, suppress emotions. We're stuffing it down. We think we're like being all cool. We're making our way across and then bam, it shoots out, comes out sideways. And you know who it normally comes out at? Our families, our loved ones, our friends. So these are the first two unhealthy, not so helpful ingredients to go from conflict to connection. So if we imagine that essentially we want to strike a balance in moving uh, towards conflict through the pain into something grander, we're going to need two elements. We want to balance candor, honoring the truth of what we are experiencing, observing in the behaviors or the action, the inaction of others, and what we are actually feeling, okay? And what we see the impact is of those behaviors or, or non-behaviors. And care, genuine, authentic care for not only the other individual, but for the relationship between you. This actually would mean that we'd have to think about genuinely what this other person cares about Imagine them in their highest and best, their best expression of themselves. Want the same for them that you want for yourself in terms of your own evolution. And want the best for the quality of your relationship. Because the truth is, the quality of our relationships impact the quality of the thinking that we can do together, which then impacts the quality of the actions that we take and the quality of the results that we can get together. Now, friction and conflict doesn't have to be something that we overexpress or suppress on the other side. It actually can be the friction between two different points of view, two different perceptions into the marketplace, two different uh, beliefs around what's possible that actually generates the energy to propel you both forward to higher heights of new possibilities, but only if we can create a container that allows those different divergent views to be heard and honored. So are you ready? Here's the five ingredients to go from conflict to connection and ultimately greater impact. Number one, it's an awareness. It's a deep awareness of what your physiology, your feelings and your thoughts are telling you when you first get triggered around something. So, so let's say number one, something happens in the workplace and you realize I'm really feeling pissed off right now. I'm noticing it because my jaw is clenching. I actually have an impulse to kind of smack the individual in front of me. I'm not going to do it, but this is my impulse. I wish we could just kind of, ugh, you know, sort of end this conversation right now. And my thinking is I want to just get the heck out of here, right? So that would be an awareness of physiology, jaw, feeling, I'm kind of angry, kind of frustrated, and my impulse, right, is, is just to kind of get out of here, get this irritant out of the way, or leave, right? So whatever your, your awareness is, but bring it to your awareness. Don't let it just run like a default computer system that's driving you, because then what happens is that physiology leads into the emotion. You're gonna be driven to take action from that combination of physiology, thought, feelings, and thoughts. So awareness, number one. Number two, really design your mood 
when you are going to have the conversation with the other individual that you have the conflicting perception, perspective, experience. What do I mean by that? Our moods, our energy is something that we have control over. We have power over it. Like anything, right? We're not gonna have a good outcome from a conversation if we go in all fired up. Okay, that's obvious, but designing a time when your grounding can be so anchored in, when your energy can be so charge neutral, that kind of like an Aikido individual, the, 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 the kind of the attack can come at you and you can be like a bamboo reed that bounces back, that's the kind of energy that I'm talking about. So what is it gonna take for you to intentionally design that kind of energy? So that's number two. Number three, get very, very intentional about what the specific action is that you want resulting out of the conversation. This conversation is not meant to be just a dumping ground where you discharge your negative or perception or your discomfort your emotion, your negative emotion on the other people on the other person, that's not going to lead to anything positive. If you have a specific action that you would like the situation to result in, a request, um, a suggestion on how you two might work together more effectively going forward, then think about that intentionally and then think about what your part in the, that action might be. So if you're making a request, what else that is it that you can offer to actually be in tandem with that, so that, that you both can move forward together. Number four, ask before you tell. Ooh, this is one that can get us into trouble if we don't do it. When we have, first of all, done these first three steps and then we actually have a chance to catch up with somebody, we can knock on their door or in these days, right, um, text them and maybe set up a quick Zoom call and say, hey, do you have just a few minutes? Do I, do I have the permission to maybe share with you um, my perception of what I observed last meeting? I, I'd like to share my perception, what I am noticing, my assessment of the situation and what the impact was because I genuinely think um, there's some great things that we're doing and some things that we could tighten and make even better to strengthen our outcome. Do you have a few minutes? Right, you ask before you tell. Is this a good time? Is this a good time for me to share my assessment of what's going on? So ask before you tell. And then number five, super simple, but really hard when you're triggered or if there's a pattern of um, getting into conflict with an individual. And that is to listen more deeply than you ever have before with this person. And listen for not just what is being stated, but what is the underlying kind of needs, interests, values? What are their purposes? What is it that they want? So, so much in life as a whole, and how can you connect what your request is to what those deeper purposes are for them? With those five ingredients for healthy conflict into deeper connection, we can not only improve the quality of our relationships, deepen trust, but we can also achieve more than we ever thought was possible. And we recover responsibility for our own contribution to some of the challenges that we face. I hope that these essential ingredients are helpful to you. Let me know how it goes as you put these into practice.